Hey folks, Chris Vandeviver here from WhyLogicProRules.com and today I wanna to talk about a logic tool that I feel falls off the radar for a lot of people. And it's really unfortunate because this tool can make your life so much easier, faster, and way more pleasant. And that is the Marquee Tool. Maybe you've seen it around, but I think because it's not obvious by looking at it what it does, folks tend to gravitate towards other tools. I mean, even based on the name, Marquee Tool, like what does that mean exactly? But the Marquee Tool is amazing. In a nutshell, the Marquee Tool allows you to make specific selections of an audio region or file. Now, it's not like the Pointer Tool. The Pointer Tool, you're able to change the state of a track by clicking on buttons. You're able to grab, hold, and move a region. You're able to go into drop-down menus, obviously. But the marquee tool allows you to, say, select this specific part of this drum track. Let me try with the pointer tool. I mean, if I try to make the selection, I can't. Instead, all I can do is move the region. But the marquee tool, I can select this part of the region specifically, and then based on key command or context, I can do different things with it. So I want to share six reasons that I use the marquee tool on a regular basis. First things first, let's set the marquee tool as your command click tool. And you can do that by using key command T and then going down and hovering over the marquee tool. Don't click on it. Instead, hold command and then click on the marquee tool. So now you have the pointer tool for 99% of what you need to accomplish. And then if you need the marquee tool, you can hold command and it changes. This is a really handy for making the mouse a dual purpose tool. So let's go back to that drum part and let's make this selection here. So now I've specifically selected this part of the drum track and I can do different things with it if I so chose. The number one reason that I use the marquee tool is to eliminate dead space from my tracks. Now I went over this in a previous video about how to organize your logic sessions. But as you might be able to see here, there's just empty space on certain tracks. Oftentimes this empty space is actually like an audio track of a performer and they're just not performing, but maybe there's some ambient noise like amp noise or an air conditioner or the performer moving around and you just don't want that in your tracks. So you can very quickly highlight a selection and then hit delete to remove it. And this is really helpful. Say you just have software instruments that have been bounced down and there's no actual noise. If you eliminate these swaths of emptiness, it soon becomes easier to navigate around your session and know where you are in the session. So this is a very easy and quick way to use the marquee tool to clean up and remove things. Say that there is noise, just say that this part of the drum track I don't really care for, I can just delete it and it's gone. Just by making that selection, just using the marquee tool, click, hold, drag across, and then delete. There's another purpose for the marquee tool and that's to quickly split up a region. Now say I wanna remove this part of the region before bar 13 from what comes after bar 13. So we can use the marquee tool, go to bar 13 and then just double click. You don't have to navigate towards the scissor tool or anything else. It's just a quick double click on the region and now it's a separate region altogether and I can drag this down to another track if I want to process it in a different way from the main track. It's amazing. So then number three, you're able to make selections to listen to. Say I wanna to listen to this synth track, but just this much of it, I just wanna hear just this part. So select that part of the region and hit play. And the playhead stops at the end of the selection. So this is all pretty cool. One technique that I find really valuable, just amazing. Say for example, I have this drum track here. I wanna select this part of the drum track, but I wanna process it different. So I wanna create a duplicate track so I can add distortion or something else, but I don't want it all over my drums and I don't feel like messing around with automation. Well, that's easy enough. First, let's duplicate this drum track. Now, hold option, click and drag your selection down to the new track. And now we've made a copy 
of this part of the audio region without actually having to split up the audio region. Sometimes you don't want to break up your audio region into a million pieces. You just want to make a selection, drag it somewhere where it needs to go, and just have it automatically copy and paste there. And so you can by making these selections with a marquee tool. So one through four have all had to do with splitting regions up, moving them around, deleting them, copying and pasting them. There's two more reasons I use the marquee tool outside of these first four options. Let's go into automation. Now, automation for the longest time, when I first got started in Logic, I hated working with automation. You know, you, you click on the line, you make a node, and you drag it down, but, uh, you know, I don't want it to drop in volume for the whole duration, so then you got to make another two nodes and drag it up. I don't know. I hated working with automation until I figured out that it didn't have to be this tedious to work with. Instead, we can use the marquee tool to make a selection. So let's bring up our tool. Let's make a selection and now click on this line. So we're working with volume automation, right? It looks like it made two nodes, but if I drag this up or down, in fact, the marquee tool has made four nodes. So now it has bracketed our selection, making it very easy to drag our automation selection up or down and very quickly work through the automation. Now there's one more tactic that I use the marquee tool for. Sometimes you want to process a part of your audio region differently from the rest of the region. For example, we have this drum track here. Let's solo it and listen. That drum take just kind of ends abruptly, sort of weird. So I want to add reverb, but I don't really want reverb for the whole take. I just want it on that last bit. So it has a little bit more of a tail to it. So what you could do is, is you can make the selection. You could separate that selection and drag it down to a different track. And then you could add your processing on that channel separate from the main track, which is cool. But with the recent logic update, we now have the ability to do selection-based processing, which is found in the functions menu here within the arrange page. So the selection-based processing allows me to add reverb, delay, or any sort of processing to a specific part of the audio region. Now check it out. If I make this selection with the marquee tool, and I have space designer here, so I wanna add a reverb tail, and let's preview. Okay, again, I want this reverb to be applied to just that last part. So based on the selection I've made with the marquee tool, I made sure to add the effect tail because I want the full tail of the reverb. Let's hit apply. And now Logic has effectively bounced in place my selection. Let's remove this menu, remove the cycle range, and let's just listen. And now that processing has been applied to just that part of the audio region. So those are six reasons I use the marquee tool. And I'm telling you, it will make your life way faster, way more pleasant. And a quick recap, I use the marquee tool to quickly select and remove bits of audio. I'm able to double click on a region to split it up. I'm able to select a part of a region and then play it back to listen to it. Or I can make a selection and copy and paste that selection to a different track or somewhere else contained on the same track. I can adjust automation using the marquee tool. And then lastly, selection-based processing for a specific part of a region, as we saw. So I hope that was helpful to you. As always, if it was, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules or subscribing on the website, whylogicprorules.com. Every week, I'm creating posts, videos, emails, entirely based to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.